Hello everybody, this is Zachary Knight with Divine Knight Gaming and I'm here to show you a little bit about uh, a little bit on the development side of our game Demon's Hex. Uh, a little while ago in the July uh, game Oklahoma Game Developer meeting I showed off uh, Demon's Hex, what I had then to the crowd and it wasn't much and and all of you people out on the internet you couldn't really see much of anything at all because the screen was small and and the video was grainy and so I decided since I made a lot of a lot of updates I'm going to do a little walkthrough show you what I've got and show you how well development is coming along you know so here is Demon's Hex uh, for your enjoyment um, you know start off this is the this is our working title screen you know it's we're keeping it simple at the moment because we're really working on the gameplay but as you can see here's the game's name Demon's Hex um, you can see that these by these little hexagons that this has something to do with hexagons um, there's also two options here and this is mostly for convenience sake uh, we've got the random battle which takes you straight to the battle mode which is where the core of the gameplay is going to be in a story mode which I will show you here in a little bit later it doesn't have much at all going forward at the moment it's just kind of a placeholder until we can actually build a, the story mode into the game but for now what I want to show you is in the random battles okay so we will click here and look at this okay this is the battle screen okay um, if you look up here in let me show you the features of it. if you look up here in the left this is the score box okay you can see a red zero here indicating the score for the enemy which is represented by these six token backs this represents their hand obviously we can't see what tokens they have or else that would be kind of cheaty um, you know, and down here the blue blue zero is the player score and right now you know it's zero and luckily for us the randomized scoring or randomized turn order uh, placed uh, the player's turn, my turn, as first. You know, so this way I get a little more time to show you things before the game starts kicking out. Okay, here in the middle is the gameplay, the game board. You know, you can see it's a three by four by three grid of hexagons. You know, that's a total of ten hexagons. And you know, as I said, here's the enemy's hand, and here is my hand. Now, you can. One thing you might notice is that there's only 10 spaces and there's a total of 12 tokens, you know, six enemy tokens, six player tokens that uh, that that you have. And this is uh, this was a design decision by me. Um, I decided that I wanted to give the player a buffer to use in case they decided they they needed to change up their tactic late in the game. And if I had limited it to 5 tokens only, then you wouldn't have had that option and I think you know it's it's fair you know to to let you have that extra token just to strategize a little bit more okay now now we'll get a little bit more into the gameplay you know I'm going to drag out one of these I'm not gonna play it just yet but I want to show you the token you know here here's one of the tokens that you can play and uh, you know, in the middle, you've got your the character that it represents. This one is a thief, um, and on the left is the the token's attack with a little sword above it to indicate that's the attack. On the right is its defense. You know, the three with the shield above it. Now, if you look on the right side of the token, on the the three right edges, you can see triangles, little gray triangles. That indicates which directions that token can attack from. The three blank sides means that that's its defense side. Now, as the, as the game progresses, I'll show you a little bit more how this works. But basically, the arrows are pointing to the direction that it can attack. And if somebody attacks it from one of the blank sides, then that that affects its defense. I'll show you that here in just a sec and this token is actually a good one to start with because it has a fairly high attack which is four and a, and a fairly low defense um, three and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this token right here because that puts the the three arrows pointing into those three conjoining spaces and I'll show you why here in just a sec well, and the enemy didn't play along. Right now, the enemy's AI is uh, 
is completely random. You know, it picks a random set of tokens and it plays a random one of those tokens out onto the board at any given time and it just places it anywhere on the board. And it has no thought for strategy. Sometimes this works out for for it. You know, sometimes it'll actually play a good move and I'll lose. Other times it does something stupid like that and doesn't capture a token. Now, if you look at this, it, once I get the enemy AI working, you know, the enemy would have said, okay, I've got this token with a six, uh, with a six attack, and it's pointing this direction. So what it could have done was taken this fire elemental token and place it right here in this spot. And what it would have done, see this arrow and this arrow would have been facing each other. And when two arrows are facing off, then that means that their two attacks are going to face off. So had he put this one here, his six attack would have been gone up to battle against this one's four attack, and it would have captured, the enemy would have captured my thief token, and would have gained a score of two, and I would have been dropped down to zero. But because the enemy didn't play along, that didn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the attack to defense works. See, what I've got here is I've got a little dark knight who has a seven attack, and it's got an arrow pointing up to the top right, which I'm gonna place right here, and what's going to happen is, see the bottom left side of the fire elemental token is blank, and so when an arrow is facing a blank side, then it's the, the attacker's attack versus the defender's defense. So this would mean my seven attack would go up against the fire elemental's five defense, and I will capture it. See? And the enemy just played his move, and it was a dumb move again. So, but as you can see, I've got a score of three, and the enemy has a score of one because it's representing this one. Now, before I go on, I want to show you a little bit here. And this is something I haven't implemented yet, but you can look here, you can see here in the bottom a little fire spurt. And what this is, is it is a elemental representation of this token. You know, these other tokens don't have anything like that. That means these are non-elementals. Um, but as I work on the game, you know, these elements are going to have a... These elements are going to have a special uh, capability, you know, and it's pretty common set of, uh, set of capabilities, you know, what you would see in a RPG. So, like, fire would be strong against um, stronger against wind, and so if a fire token is attacking a wind token, that wind token drops one point in its attack. So if this one attacked a a uh, you know something with a, a wind elemental with a six defense, that wind elemental's def defense would have been dropped by one, and it would have been five, and so this one would capture it. Um, Right now, that's not implemented. I'm trying to get some of the other basic gameplay uh, out of the way uh, before I start implementing things like that. But for now, I'm going to uh, we're going to finish up this battle, and you're going to see how things play out. Um, so right now, the enemy played this little head token. You know, the a bunch of ghost heads that just kind of float around. My brother Willis. Uh, he thought of that idea, and it would turned out to be pretty neat. So I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm going to take my pallet in here, and I'm going to drop it right here and capture his head. Now, here we go again. Okay, now this is where some little strategy comes comes in. You know, the enemy just dropped a snake down, and it has a two attack, three defense, and uh, and this one little spot here, you know, it has an attack opening. And, see, I could use any of these guys. Like, I could drop this guy here and take it. You know, I could drop this guy here and take it. But that's not what I want to do. You know, I, I want to save those guys for a little bit later in case I need them because they're stronger. So what I can do is I can take this little foot soldier who has the three attack and has an arrow pointing to the top left, and I can just drop it right here. And because that snake has only a two attack, I'll capture it. Ta-da! And see, the enemy here decided to, <laughs> out of pure luck, decided to to play a bum move. You know, he, I guess he figured he's not going to capture anything, so he might as well just drop whatever he has down here in this empty space and be safe with a score of one. And, and then since 
since I'm going to be mean, I'm going to drop this guy who has my highest attack and is pointing at the only empty space. I'm going to drop it there, and he does not capture it because he doesn't have a good enough token. Now, the game is over at this point. The board is full. The turn order indicator is gone. Now, there's no win statement, you know, nothing saying, hey, you just won the battle. You know, I haven't implemented that yet. That's coming soon. But you can look here and you can say, hey, I captured eight tokens on the board. The enemy only has two tokens on the board. I win. Hooray for me. Now, <laughs> now something you might notice is that uh, there's a bit of a bug in this part. I haven't figured it out. It's a low priority bug because it doesn't have, affect gameplay in any way. These are just kind of there. They they just kind of indicate it, and they're they're supposed to disappear with every every time the enemy plays a token. One of these is supposed to disappear, but it doesn't do so consistently. And I haven't figured out why, but I'm gonna get it fixed before the game is is before I consider the game feature complete. So that's the basics of the game battle, and you get the gist of it. And I'll probably be tweaking things. There's definitely a few things that I want to work on um, to to add more variety on it. You know, for instance, I would like to put uh, like dedicate some random spaces as elemental, so that you know if you place a token somewhere, it gains that elemental property. Um, that that's something that I consider uh, to be. You know, possibly a good feature. Another thing that I want to do, that I know I'm going to do, is I'm going to implement walls between grid spaces. So when you load up a battle, you know, a random number of walls will sp spawn up between spaces. And what that means is, is that if a wall is there, you can't attack through it. So like right here, if there was a wall right here, my Dark Knight wouldn't have been able to attack this fire elemental. I would have had another, find another avenue of attack to get to this space. Now, I'm going to be programming it so that it doesn't completely wall off a spot because that would not be fair. So I, I haven't decided if it's going to be completely random or if I'm going to create a specific set of walls and just pick randomly from that those sets and it, it's something that I haven't quite decided yet but it's definitely a feature that I want to add because it's going to add a lot more variety and a little more randomization to the strategy so you can't just populate your hand with the best tokens available um, it, you know you would have to you know you would put what tokens you have and then realize oh crap now I can't use one of my tokens in a spot that I would have liked because there's a wall there um, but that's something that's going to be coming along here here later uh, once I get a few more features added before then. So that's it for the battles. You know, it's coming along great. The game is playable. It's on the website at divinenightgaming.com, and you go to click Demons Hex in the menu. Okay, so now I want to kind of give you a preview of story mode. There's nothing here except for the map. Okay, this is the opening map for Demon's Hex, and what this what this is, and and it's going to have a lot more features and capabilities. Like, what it's going to have is blue nodes are story nodes, you know, where where there interactions with NPCs, you know, you find out missions, quests, you know, that sort of thing, and red nodes are going to be battle nodes, and here you would have to battle, and you would go to that battle screen. And, and you would play out a few battles before these tokens go gray and you can pass through them. So like, you know, in this case, you know, maybe you'd wash up on the shore of this little island, you know, get introduced to the world, and then, you know, the owner of this little cabin would say, hey, you should go to the, ca the castle and talk to the king. And, you know, and the king would tell you, hey, we, uh, we really need to get to the mountain because we've got, uh, you know, some villagers trapped there. And, uh, but, you know, there's monsters in the woods, you know, the woods the only path to get to the mountain, and the bridge is out anyways, you know, so, so we need you to clear out the woods so we can get to, get there and repair the bridge so that we can get to the mountain and rescue, rescue the villagers. And so you would go here and play out a few story battles, um, beat a few monsters and, and everything, 
you know, the bridge would get repaired, and then you would come here, beat these monsters, and save the villagers. And, you know, something along those lines. Now, if you hover here over the right, this is uh, the game menu screen. And, uh, and there's a few options here, and, uh, you know, you know, very only two of these really do anything at the moment. This one here will just take you straight to that battle screen again. And there's actually something I forgot to show you or tell you there. And and we'll go back and play one more round before I'm done here. But we've also got this little treasure chest. And I like this treasure chest. My brother Willis, he uh, he made he made all these icons and they look great. You click it and ooh, I forgot to implement it. <laughs> I thought I had it had it set up where it pulled in the list of tokens, but I guess I forgot to uh, to save that that progress or something. But you would see all the tokens that you own in your in your deck. Um, so coming back here, you know this one you know would be a buy screen. It would take you to the option to buy tokens, um, and this one would take you to the instructions and everything. Um, but but this is kind of the way things are starting out. Um, there's not a lot going on in the map because, again, the battles are where it's at. So to close this out, I'm going to play one last battle and, uh, and you know, just kind of show you where things go from there. So I'm going to play this. Oh, the enemy didn't play along. So I'm going to attack the enemy here. And, oh, it took two of my tokens. Or took one of my tokens. All right. So, hey, look, I can do this. Oh, that's not going to get me that one. Um, well, I can't capture I can't capture the wind elemental, unfortunately. So, I'm going to drop this guy here. Oh, pff, and I dropped the wrong guy. I meant to grab my archer. Oh, I'm sucking it up today. Okay. Uh, and I cannot win this one for the life of me. But I won anyways. Okay. <laughs> I, I played some very bad moves there, but, you know, I did capture a few of the enemy tokens, and, and that's good, and uh, enough to win. Um, and when and when it comes to winning, um, you know, when you win, you know, you'll get the option of taking one of the enemy's tokens for your own. And, uh, and so, what, what, how that works is any token of the enemies that you captured during the game you get to pick one of those. So like here, I captured this bat, and I captured these heads. And I get to pick which one I want to keep. And, you know, and I like the bat better than the heads because the bat has a little higher attack here. And it can attack three spots instead of just two. So I would take the bat. Um, and that's basically how it plays out. Now, if you're lucky and you, and you get to go last, you know, you might might be able to capture a perfect game and this is going to be a rare scenario because you know un unless you're going last there's no way that you can unless you go second there's no way that you could get a perfect game and so if you can get a perfect game you get to take all five of the enemy's tokens off the board and keep them and uh, and that's something that that I think is going to be a good prize for somebody who plays really well and uh, you know and it's not something that's going to happen on a regular basis but it's going to happen enough that keep, people are going to try to do it. And uh, so so that's it for now. Um, that is Demon's Hex. And uh, I think it's coming along great. You know, it's still got a lot of a long way to go to be c uh, completely complete. But for now, this is a great start. Thank you for spending time with me and watching me show this game. And I hope you guys get excited about it. And I will... I will talk to you later when I have new updates.